in three target environments primarily. Um, through the Arabic media, so Palestinian media, but then the broader Arab world through Al Jazeera, Al Arabiya, and other um, local media, the American media landscape, and um, the Israeli media landscape. And then anything else that comes up, like when we were in Berlin, we got German, you know, stuff will be event-based or festival-driven or theatrical release-driven, but we don't channel a lot of our energy unless we think it's an influential um, entity, like let's say The Economist, where it would be worth our investment to pursue. Um, we think a lot about media. So interestingly, when we were in Berlin, we knew that the Israeli media takes the German media very seriously, and more seriously than the American media, and they, and they follow it. And um, so we hired a German publicist, even though Germany is not our target audience, in order to get, and we did get blank, we got tons of coverage in the German press. All of that coverage, then we hired an Israeli PR person at the same time, not when we opened at the Jerusalem Film Festival, but when we opened in Berlin. And the um, Israeli media just picked up all the German media. So we had incredibly positive co coverage. I was on the army radio, we were on talk shows, we were, I mean, the film just got picked up with a very positive lens because the Germans were regarded as fair arbiters. It's ironic but it's a historical, <laughs> it's one of those things, folks. I mean, but this is where, this is where, this is where I think knowing your audience is incredibly important, and we're a mixed team, we're, we have Israel, I'm an Israeli citizen, I mean, we know the landscape, and so, um, uh, we don't know everything, we make tons of mistakes, but we knew that, and so that was a way to do it. The other thing that we've done is we've partnered with think tanks, so the New America Foundation hosted two, um, sort of fancy screenings for us with dinner at a fancy restaurant, you know, to kind of make it attractive to journalists. And we had members of Congress come to one and journalists, and then we had journalists at another. And that generated a ton of press around our Tribeca <coughs> and Silver Docks um, premieres of Boudreaux. Um, and in general, you know, we're, we're constantly interacting with journalists on the ground because there's a heavy concentration of journalists in Jerusalem and in, in the region. Um, so it's, it's a perpetual strategy. One thing that helped a lot, um, Julia Basha, who is our media director, she directed um, Boudreau, she co-directed in Counterpoint. Um, she was invited to do a TED Talk this past year on nonviolence and showed a clip from Boudreau's. And they ended up choosing that as one of the top like 18 talks of 2011. And so it was put on CNN um, at, with an op-ed and that generated something like a quarter million views in a week. And, you know, so we're, we're, we're um, we either try to do it ourselves or we look for the trusted messengers and the unusual messengers. Like Richard Branson a couple of weeks ago tweeted and talked about our new film series in the New York Times. And for a lot of people to think like Richard Branson, you know, you would expect it from, let's say, a Michael Moore, but you wouldn't expect it from a Richard Branson. So trying to find those moments of cognitive dissonance, the trusted messengers who can carry, um, and, and thinking strategically about how do we how do we try to position our work um, among those um, folks who, who are credible voices, and how do we not try to get pigeon, you know, how do we avoid getting pigeonholed in the kind of activist um, news circles, because that's where a lot of attention is already focused, it's important, but if we want to reach other communities, we want to step out of that.